spending a Sunday afternoon with the Backstreet Boys. And the largest crowd we have ever seen in Times Square at one time. Honestly, it looks like New Year's Eve was the last time I can even think of something that came close. People slept here last night. There's our especially selected studio audience that joins us. I'm Carson. The Backstreet Boys are around me to my right and to my left. We have a call from Ohio now for a question. Hello? Hey, Carson. Hey, guys. Nick, I love you. <laughs> Hi. My question is is that I want to know what you guys think of the whole boy band phenomenon. I mean, you guys are basically the ones to start it out, you know, Like, and I just want to know your thoughts on it. What? Um, Everybody yeah. points at yeah, <laughs> It's, um, <laughs> you know, we, when we first came out, we were compared and um, looked at as, uh, as the new, you know, whatever that came before us. Right. Um, the people that came before us were looked at as the people that came before them. But um, we look uh, we look at this as a, as a great opportunity because we've opened a lot of doors um, for a lot of groups. Um, but we as a group, we try to stay focused on what, you know, we're doing. Um, I think we try to stay focused and well-rounded towards the music rather than getting caught up in trying to um, follow what everybody else is doing, um, being that we were we were first, so it's important to us. You know, we're fortunate that they came. That there's a lot of groups that came behind us, um, and it's flattering to see that happen because we've we've kind of set trends musically and um, and in the market, so to say, the pop market. We kind of brought it back. So it's was there ever a time where you, you maybe you read something that would uh, you know hurt your feelings? Definitely. All the time. I mean, but you have to just when when you're in the public eye. When you're in the public eye, I mean, that's just part of it. That's something that you got to get used to. Not everybody's going to like you. Right. And there's a lot of people that are going to, you know, crack jokes and stuff. But that's just part of it. You know, you shrug it off and you just got to be and happy like with what, what you're doing. What AJ was saying about the Rolling Stone article that's it, out right it now was it's just brutally true. It's just, it was a really good article about everybody because it was just honest. And that's what we want everyone to know is that we're real and we're 100% real. I mean, it's just, that, that was... Honestly, in my opinion, that was the best article I've ever read about all of us. I mean, it, it broke down every single one of us individually and as a group. And it was just a very honest and truthful, from the heart type of article. It wasn't something that was just made up. Right. You know, and if that's Quartz is, that, is out now, you guys can pick that up. We're going to read an email now that uh, we got during the show. Um, it's from Claire in Trinidad and Tobago. Tobago. Somewhere far away. Uh, Cl <laughs> Tobago. Tobago, Tobago. Uh, tomato, 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 we're tomato. gonna do it. Okay, <laughs> I'm over it. Uh, if you guys weren't in the band, what do you think you would? Where do you think you would be, or what do you think you would be doing, and why? If you weren't here today in this band, so let's go ahead and start with you, Howie. I think I'd be involved in the entertainment business somehow or another, whether it was um, still doing singing as a solo artist or or doing maybe acting in movies or television somehow or another. That's how, like I say, we met. Was you know AJ and I and Nick, you know, being in the business when we were younger in Orlando. You know, doing stuff at Universal Studios for Nickelodeon and, you know, appearing in little movies here and there. So, um, like I said, entertainment's been, you know, a big part of my life since the age of six on up. So I think I can't see my life without, you know, being somehow involved in the entertainment field. I also even producing. I'm actually getting a little bit into the, the writing and producing and writing and collaborating with a lot of other artists. Um, I collaborated recently with Foxy Brown. I've collaborated with a lot of other artists from uh, people from uh, Baby, Baby Faces Camp. <laughs> anybody have, would anybody have not been in the business in any way, shape, or form? Like, like you mentioned, teaching, or was that ever a possibility if you weren't here? I would have probably uh, just getting ready to finish up a, a college, probably at 24, um, or just finished, and um, I might have been, you know, studied to be a youth minister at a church, or, uh, or maybe a, uh, maybe you know, a teacher, like I was saying. Very cool. You know, still singing at church or singing, singing for free. <laughs> nice. Um, I remember the 1997 um, MTV Video Music Awards. Watching um, Ben Stiller did a um, sort of a parody. You guys were nice enough to. Oh, it was 98. That was fun. That was right, whatever fun. it was. <laughs> but we all remember it, I'm sure. Um, let's watch that actually right now. Backstreet Boys. There were six Backstreet Boys originally. I was the sixth. No, I was the first Backstreet Boy. 
it's not that I got kicked out exactly. Uh, it's more like I like to think that I threw them out of my band, but they retained the name. Yeah, I basically uh, established Backstreet Boys in 93 when I was a senior in high school, but I was split at the time between my commitment to the band, which wasn't really happening at the time, and then my commitment over at Wet n Wild Stunt Spectacular Universal Studios, in which I portrayed the Merman. And at the time, it was a choice, you know, Backstreet Merman. The truth is, we all got together and said, this trend guy's got to go. Yeah, out in the snow. What do you know, bro? He's, He's a, a double zero. zero. Adios. Out the He's wacky, the yo. They couldn't deal with his dancing, right? That much creativity, the mind cannot, de it literally shuts down. His dancing sucked, and he totally threw everybody off. I don't call what I do dancing anyway. I call it sparkling. All right, that's what I've always done. It's called sparkling. If you do it in a in a group of other people, it's like if like I, you know if like four of us were sitting around talking, to, uh, you know, French, and then another guy starts talking Chinese, you're looking at that guy and go, "What's wrong with that guy?" You know, oh, he's talking Chinese. Okay. Let me tell you something. You don't put leg shackles on Mercury. You don't tell Trent McGivers not to sparkle, and you don't spit on Superman's cape. Right? Done. Goodbye. Good night. Baby goes to sleep now. Best classic, man. There you go. From the 1998 MTV the Music Awards. And you guys were good sports about it. That's he, that was fun. It looked. That was like. a lot of fun. He was. Yeah, he's fun a really cool guy. I, actually, we met him um, after the awards show. And I exchanged numbers with him and actually keep in touch with him every once in a while. I saw him when he was on Saturday Night Live here yeah. uh, not too long ago. And just a really cool guy. And it's really cool that he respects us as, you know, as artists and everything. So it's awesome. much props out there to Ben Stiller. Very cool. Awesome. We're going to take another break. How about uh, the Backstreet Boys singing live? Is that going to do all right for everybody? I think so. Plus a trivia contest you'll never forget. More with the Backstreet Boys live on MTV next.